ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Football Daily Weekly. Good to have you with us. It's Q&A time. You provide the Q's, we provide the A's. Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV is here. And so is Lawrence. What does A stand for? Absolutely. Right, OK. Uh, so let us let us begin. Edwin <clears throat> is asking, would Cavani be a good signing for Arsenal? I worry a bit about Cavani. Um, you know, I, is I he just, all right? I just worry is that, is he still... I mean, when he was in Italy, he was the best striker in the world. Um, but now, I don't know, I've seen him in quite a lot of games um, for PSG, and he just doesn't seem... I'm starting to think, is it another sort of foul cow type side? But is he where overshadowed by he comes in and, But he's had a lot of games where, you know, even Ibrahimovic has been out, and he, he'll he come for massive, massive money. He's starting to get a bit older. I, I'd go for other targets. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't go for Cavani. Mm-hmm. I would go for other targets. I just think that... He's starting to become one of those mega names like Falcao that may be past his best. That's sure. what I think. Lawrence? Falcao's had it tough. I would say, um, you know, Falcao isn't the... He's not the be-all and end-all when it comes to that position as a player. I'm not sure either whether he'd fit Arsenal's style. A few years ago, he was described as the world's first box-to-box striker. <laughs> I thought that was a really good... I think that was James Horncastle that said that. It was right. a lovely quote. And But the point would stand, maybe he just doesn't suit Arsenal's style as much. And, you know, it would be good to see a, a striker in his mould, but like Robbie says, maybe at a different point or a peak in their career. Uh, just, who is that? Would you rather see a Lacazette than I like, a... I like the look of Lacazette. Um, I think he's good. I, I like Higuain as well. I still like Higuain. I think he... He, he'd be available. Even um, Ben Teke. I like really? Ben Teke. I think Ben Teke is a beast. Uh, I hope he's not a beast against us in the FA Cup final. Not but too similar I'm, to Giroud? No, is he maybe yeah, not I suppose that's option. the only thing is that he's a bit too similar to Giroud. That's why I'm more lean to a Lacazette star player yeah. that is like a sort of completely different type of player. But yeah. I, I like Ben Teke. I like this Jackson Martinez has been mm. spoke about for Arsenal. Magnificent goal scoring record. I just think with Cavani, and I could be wrong, don't get me wrong, but mm. I just look at it and think, is that a player mm. that's past this peak, but because there's such a lack of world-class strikers out there that his name always gets mentioned first, mm. and he'd be, he'd be 50 million? No, I don't think he's worth I, it. I, I, okay, I, then. A follow-up question then for, for, by Charlie Lonegrand is asking, question of Robbie, do you, and uh, we'll bring you in too, Lonegrand. Yeah, no, but um, especially Robbie. Yeah, do, yeah. Who do you believe Arsenal need to bring in over the summer? Perhaps make them title contenders. You well, know. just said, mate. Were you not listening? <laughs> Striker, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, one of those, any of those names mentioned um, before. Um, I, I still think we need a holding midfielder, even though Francis Cochrane has been absolutely brilliant. Mm. I want to see competition in that position, a bit like what Chelsea have done. You know, I mean, yeah. they've got two good players in that position. Mm. I'd like us to bring in. These, you know, we've we've um, been linked to Vidal. Um, Arturo Oof. Vidal from Juventus, well, would he, he would be a great signing. I'd eat my hand if um, they signed. <laughs> Kondogbia, uh, um, Kondogbia. Uh, Monaco, I'm very oh, impressed with yeah. him. Oh, yeah. um, I think I think he could do a great job there. Schneidlin, um, who uh, I get a bit worried about his injury record. Um, you know, that's mm. probably why he'd fit at Arsenal, but I get worried about his injuries. But maybe um, someone like a Schneidlin in that holding midfielder position. And then I think Almost. goalkeeping... <laughs> Hummels, yeah. Again, Hummels, I want I worry is Hummels another one of those sort of players, a bit like Cavani, where he's just always spoken about, but is he, you know? I think more important than than that is because we've brought in Gabriel. I think more important than that for Arsenal is a goalkeeper. If Peter Cech is available and we we can get him, uh, whether Chelsea will let him go or not, I don't know. But I've I've heard that, you know, he's got an agreement that he can go to wherever he wants. To me, that would be a no-brainer to bring in Peter Cech. Thomas Spratt is asking, has Klopp made the right decision to leave and where might he go? I think he has made the right decision to leave at this point. Seven years at that club, fantastic. A wonderful emotional speech. Genuinely brought me to tears. Yeah, I cried watching it. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Other people in the comments will probably admit the same. It's all right to be in touch with your emotions, guys, even if you like playing football. Mm. Um, Can you be too in touch with your emotions? We'll leave that for the comments below. But where did you so you think it was the right time to move? Yeah, carbon life form. And, life-form. and uh, don't dig him out. And, uh, but where do you think he should go? Well, that's that's a good question, Marcus. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Newcastle uh, position will be free. Liverpool. Uh, but yeah, Liverpool is obviously an option. Um, is it although, an option? R- well, Robbie was extolling the virtues of not going to Liverpool. <laughs> um, uh, the, someone said Besiktas. 
There's, um, been, to- there's been talk of a couple of clubs in oh, turn. No way. If he's, he's leaving Borussia Dortmund, which, you know, I've been to that. It's a massive, massive, 80,000 people here. Great stadium. Massive club, right? Good players as well. I, I, to me, he doesn't want to go to the same type of thing where he's have to be juggling money and stuff. He wants to go to somewhere. Why not? What if he, what if he enjoys that? Well, he's clearly me, enjoyed his experience. I don't know, at... he, but then he's going to start getting sort of almost like in films and you're typecast in a certain role. Mm. I, if I was Jurgen Klopp, I'd be saying to myself, right, now I want a bigger job. I want to go to one of these clubs where there's going to be money available for me to spend. It's in the Champions League. And that's why, I mean, he would be great for Liverpool, but that's why I think he wouldn't go to Liverpool because at the mess that Liverpool are in at the moment and, and, and the fact that they're not, not in the Champions League. Maybe if they'd have got in the Champions League, yeah. maybe he might have considered it. But does he want to go and mm. always be known as the guy that comes in to rebuild a project or whatever? Or does he want to go and take on those real big jobs where he's got a chance of becoming a great? Um, Roman Ozeguera is asking, where will Sam Allardyce manage next season, Robbie? Where will Sam Allardyce manage? Perfect fit Bolton. for Sam Allardyce Sunderland. You know, Ooh, they, okay. You know, I think Sunderland, you know, you know what they do. Do you always, not think Dick Avocat will stay? If, if Dick Avocat, if he doesn't stay, if I was um, in charge at Sunderland, I would be rushing down to London to get all the Allardyce. Mm-hmm. He's, he, he, you know, basically Sunderland, what, past two, three seasons, just about survived. Sam Allardyce will make you survive. Mm. All right, the style of football may not be great, or, you know, but I think. One thing you've got to say about him, he, he, he'll keep your team in the Premier League. And I, I, I think Sunderland is a, is a decent sort of club for him. Big They're, club. Big club. Mm. You know, I, I've, I've been there many times. That, you know, it's, it's a lovely ground. Yeah. You get great attendances. And I think, I think Sam Allardyce would do a good job at Sunderland. I, I, I really think that that'd be the perfect job for, for Allardyce. It'll be one in the eye for his old club as well, Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Lawrence? He'd be motivated by that as well, wouldn't he? He would be, yeah. yeah. I think maybe Newcastle would look across and sort of go, yeah, good luck with that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. we had him. He worked out well. Oh, but where do you think he'll go, then? Um, that's what... Liverpool? Oh, imagine that. <laughs> hey! Um, Sorry. That would be... Hands up his head. I, that's what I'm, I'm really struggling to see where other guys fits in, because I, I, I mean... Yeah, I, do you think he's abroad? Or do you think he's just... I don't think the Barcelona job's up yet, is, is it? Or right? Real Madrid, Real Madrid job's Madrid up. Might be. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to see what Sam Allardyce does because, you know, I like... Any club that wants to stay in the Premier League. I don't, yeah. But right. then that's where I think Sunderland are aiming too low if they want to stay in the Premier League. I mean, Christian, who sometimes sits in my chair, No, but says, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're, you're not just going to stay in the Premier League. You're going to be... Yeah. Consolidate that. Yeah, position. you're going to be... You consolidate and you'll be in sort of mid-table with a chance to maybe, go, you know, kick on from there. But, but look at... You think about it, Di Canio had to come in. Di Canio mm-hmm. had to come in and save the day last mm-hmm. time. Advocat came in and had to save the day. It's, it wouldn't be terrible to be a mid-table Premier League side. It wouldn't season. be terrible, no. But what I'm, also, what I'm also saying is that when you look at what happens, advice at the club, great building, building. Leave the club. What happens after that? What legacy is Sam Allardyce leaving? And I think it's very tailored to what Sam does. And I think Sunderland need to be building with a wider vision there. So I would say. As, as good it would be to solidify their position, are they going to be investing down the wrong route? And I think they've gone the right route by trying to play the kind of football they want, the Gus Poirier route. And even if they've mistakenly done that at times, it would be still better than that Sam Allardyce route for me. Endrit is asking, should Xavi have won the Ballon d'Or once? Or maybe twice? He's In many ways, good. yeah. Xavi, or maybe thrice? Yeah, I mean, he's been a phenomenal player. Xavi, he's one of those players that... He, because he compliments others so much, he doesn't often get the goals. No, you're good looking. No, you're good looking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Robbie, he's been phenomenal. He's, he? he's just an amazing player. He sort of defined a style, hasn't he? That, mm. that ticker tacker style that's, that's been right. so successful. He's been at the heart of that for Spain and for Barcelona. And yes, he probably deserves to have won a Ballon d'Or at some stage. He's just unfortunate that he's in a, the time of Messi and Ronaldo. And, you know, and it's it's hard to get past those two but definitely his style of football the way he just makes it look so easy I remember watching him a couple of times um, when we've played them and he's just he, guy's just unreal he just never gives the ball away he's passing you know if, if I'm trying to if, if I'm like teaching my son how to play football I'd love him to be able to play like Xavi mm. you know he's just got he's, he's just a complete player 
But sometimes, you know, he, like you said, he's so unselfish. He's such a player that makes everything else sort of tick that he doesn't get the, the full plaudits that he deserves. Do you think, Lawrence, that he doesn't get the, the, the full plaudits? Because unlike, say, someone like Andrew Pirlo, who does, Pirlo would take free kicks. You know, he'll have those moments yeah. where he'll, he'll score a goal or perhaps like a Penenka penalty against England or something like that. Whereas Xavi does get the odd goal, lest we forget, but he doesn't have perhaps as many spectacular or overt moments like that. I think he was very appreciated. I also think maybe if we were to be in Spain at the time and oh, Barcelona yeah, I'm not sure, at their height. I, just for the record, yeah. we're not saying he's underrated. No, no, no. Yeah. But what I'm saying is also from a distance, maybe, you know, we see the Messi's and. You know, Iniesta and Xavi were two names that always went together at the height of Barcelona. Mm. I think Messi winning the Ballon d'Or is also an acknowledgement of that Barcelona side, an acknowledgement of the other players that made him great. And I think a lot of people acknowledge that during his development, they were a really good rock to build from. So I actually don't think I actually don't think Xavi should have won the Ballon d'Or. Mm. I think the other players were great in that time, and I think him winning the World Cup, everything else, and especially only after he didn't win anything until the age of 28, mm. which is incredible in the first place. Will the same be said for Theo Walcott? You know, in terms of leagues. Will he not Champions win anything until right? Well, yeah. well, but, but that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Is, 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 is the legacy that he leaves yeah. is you know, a Ballon d'Or in itself. Thank you very much for your questions. Do get your comments in below, and let us know what you thought of all that. Robbie, thank you very much indeed from Marshall Fan TV. Lawrence, always a pleasure. Never a chore. We'll see you next time.